Okay. I don't know if people tried out. I haven't even checked in a while if um, <laughs> if, if this API is actually work. Uh, lost hope because the students I was working with were meant to implement some fancy UI that was meant to be used by postgraduate students, but um, I think they're not yet up to speed, which is quite sad. Right. So there's, there's this other project that uh, I've been thinking about, and the motivation for me behind this is is I mean it stems from the fact that. Um, that since I started teaching this course, it's, it's, it's offered in the School of Education, but the program it's associated with is a, it's a Bachelor of ICT with Education, so it's newly introduced program um, because of the recent introduction of visit computer studies and whatnot in, in high schools and primary schools, I'm told now. Right? So what we've noticed right from the time the course was launched, which is 2018, is that the failure rate is quite high. Right? Um, and uh, and like some people, some colleagues have spoken, with, uh, spoken to about results where I remember one of the things that some lecturer from Bowage told us, you know, our first lecture is half of you will go. I don't believe in that. I, I think there's, um, there's things, there's interventions that we can introduce here to ensure that as many people as possible actually pass, um, especially the things are changing now. Apparently, Senate has come up with certain policies where a student can repeat as long, however times you want. There's nothing like school exclude now, right? Things have changed. So, but anyway, my interest in all of this is to see how I can ensure that more people pass the course, or at least get good marks in the CA, right? So, um, this snapshot just shows you the performance of students in continuous ass assessment score here, really bad here. Um, these are somewhat good, the good scores, I guess. I must have ordered them somehow here. Uh, but to give you some context of what this is all about here, out of the entire CA, which is 50%, the last column here tells you the percentage that the student needs to get for them to pass. Now, the problem with this course is that it's a year-long course and it combines computer systems and computer architecture, right? When I was a student myself, um, um, I didn't do that as one course. It was two separate courses. And so the, the idea behind that is we think that there are certain markers that we can use to identify at-risk students, um, and, 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 and so the obvious, the obvious markers, we well, talk about the markers just now anyway, so we, we, are, we are planning to do, uh, to combine traditional characteristics or factors together with, um, with um, we think that there's certain things we can pull out from students' digital trails. So if we are to analyze Moodle, for instance, various features there, um, would we be able to find a correlation between uh, how often a user or a student logs into Moodle to check for things and whether or not they perform well, right? Um, you know, there's funny things here. How often they uh, participate in other course activities that are not necessarily graded, like uh, we have a mailing list and we encourage a lot of interaction. Some students are active, some of them are not, right? Um, funny things like we share Google Slides of, of the notes and encourage them to look for mistakes. If they find mistakes, they'll notate that. And the idea is to to engage them in the course and hopefully, you know, in the process, they, they'll get to you know, perform better than they would. And the traditional markers we're talking about, by the way, are things like demographic, right? So which school were you at, for instance? Did you do a computer-related course before? And things of that nature. <clears throat> right, so the goal, identifying at-risk students, right? And again, if we were to go through this, um, the business understanding part for me is pretty straightforward. I started thinking about this after I had taught this course for, for almost two years. Well, for a year at least, right? So um, I, had an, I have, or at least at the time I started thinking about this, I already had an in-depth understanding of the domain I was working in. I, th I think I have a pretty good idea as to what influences students to pass or fail. I mean, it's things like, uh, because they minor in certain other courses, right? Some courses are very involving, time consuming, so we think that there's a correlation between that as well. Right. <clears throat> right, and so the objective really would be to monitor, right, students' performance from the time they start writing assessments, so quiz one up to the last quiz, which is quiz 20, the tests, you know, um, 
uh, we start collecting or we start passing through an attendance register in the tutorial sessions to see if uh, um, there's a correlation again between someone attending tutorial sessions and um, uh, and lecture sessions as well. Right. So no need for us to conduct a situation analysis because uh, we already know what the problem is all about here. Right. Uh, we haven't really gone through a thorough process of creating a project timeline per se, but uh, it's work in progress anyway. Um, and then in terms of data understanding, we've come up with um, with a list of data sources that we think we can extract this information from. Right. So the obvious one are the assessment results. Right. So these things here. We compile these religiously. We, we have, on average, we have a quiz every week, right? Um, which is pretty decent, I guess. Um, sorry. So the data sources, the assessment results, student demographics, we have this information from SIS. They've done a really good job of um, collecting really useful information. So we know where these students come from whether they are from the eastern part or which part exactly in the eastern province are they from, which school were they at, how old are they, um, which courses, a G GCE did they write, right? So all those different factors, we think we can incorporate them into these models that we're thinking of implementing, right? Um, so student past experience, um, what we we started doing beginning last year is we, we send out a preliminary survey to the students to collect this sort of information. So we ask for things like, um, what motivated you to do this course, um, to see if there's a correlation between motivation and um, performance of the student. Um, uh, what else, if you have prior computing experience, for instance, right? So we've designed a survey. Um, if you want, I can share this afterwards, just write me mail, the, the survey itself. It's a simple survey, really. <coughs> um, and then the Moodle interaction logs. Really rich data set here, and fortunately for us, we've uh, before Moodle was mandated, uh, it was quite sad. Very few people use this, and we found it really hard to convince our students to use Moodle, but we found a way around. All grades are only accessible online. If we have an assessment, like a take-home quiz, you can only submit it using the Moodle. So in the process, students got used to using Moodle. So we have a rich data set from Moodle here, the interaction logs. Um, and then the, the issue of tutorial attendance is a, is a tricky one. <laughs> Because usually this is a class of uh, anywhere between 60 and 90 students, right? So passing around an attendance register is just not for me. There's an interesting study that I uh, I know was done by someone from UCT. It's computer vision. So what this person did was um, he was trying to see if he could automate the process of um, attendance of students. So you would get a panoramic uh, image of the entire class and do some simple image recognition, right? So you you train some learning algorithm to say this person is uh, Mombi, this person is Brian, right? And then when you take that image, it's able to detect the different faces. I mean, this is a well-known problem. Um, there's well-known solutions actually to this issue. So if you think of Google Photos, for instance, it automatically does this, right? Um, we were thinking this is something that we can do, right? For a large class, I don't have time to take attendance. So maybe just develop some simple tool that we can use or something, I don't know how that would work, the backward read or something, I don't know. Uh, but anyway, so lecture attendance, and then the tutor feedback as well, this is really important because there's regular interaction between tutors and the students, right, in the smaller groups. So they're in a better position to identify the different traits associated with the students. We also take, we started taking uh, attendance um, last year. Okay, and then, so extraction of the data is pretty easy here. The assessment results, we have control over this because we compile these ourselves, right, still on that understanding. Extracting information from SIS is not that hard, um, although the data would probably need a little bit of cleaning up, depending on which, which attributes you're interested in. And then the, remember I mentioned um, the questionnaire that we dish out, this we have control of as well. <coughs> so we've already done some sort of, uh, at least with the data set we're working with last year, we've done some you know, exploratory data analysis and we have a fairly good idea of the, um, the, the, the I guess the visuals associated with the different data sets here that we, we are thinking of incorporating into this. Of course, I mean, we could go on and on um, identifying potential attributes that we can link into this, but that's besides the point. And then for data preparation, obviously, I mean, uh, uh, one of the 
So one uh, one of the this is going to be one of the data sets that we're going to be working on. So we'll have an opportunity to to see the process that you'd go through if you're wanting to prepare data associated with this. Um, so just to give you an idea, these the, the CSV files associated with the different assessments, so quizzes, right, uh, tests, um, whatnot. And what we're thinking of doing also is uh, because each quiz is based on a particular theme or topic, we're thinking of trying to see if there's a, a correlation between uh, performance of students and a particular topic. Uh, we, we do have an anecdotal evidence that seems to suggest that uh, the computer architecture component is slightly a um, bit difficult, at least the performance is really bad there. Okay. But, um, right, so just a, a sample of how the data looks like. This is the assessment, the quiz, right? user details, computer number, and the marks. Um, but of course, I mean, at some point we merge this data set, like this data set would be merged by information coming in from SIS, which has specifics of which which program the student is minoring in and which courses they are doing. Um, the interaction logs here, just uh, again, data preparation is pretty straightforward here. Um, just because the, the standard, I mean, we're putting this information from MySQL, so it's, it's, it already has some predefined structure, so it's not really that hard to work with, with this data. The only, I guess the only challenge would be to not that it's challenging, but really filter out the different features associated with Moodle. Because it turns out that some students would only be interested in just checking their grade book. Some students would only be interested in checking notes when there is a test, right? Um, so would want to see uh, the interaction logs associated with the different features of Moodle. Right, so again, still on data sources here, or data preparation, this is a survey form I was talking about, uh, where we are collecting this type of information here. And again, we'll go through a process of once it doesn't, you can collect as, as much information as you can about the domain you're working in. What's important is to go through a feature selection process where you identify um, the characteristics of the factors that highly influence and have a, a relatively higher causal effect on the overall outcome. All right, I mean, so these are the, 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 the things that we'd normally do here because we are mostly working with text here, so it will be mostly text processing here when it comes to cleaning up. And the obvious, you know, deduplicating records and checking for null values. Uh, because we have substantially large data set, we can, we can get away with excluding certain students that fell off. Uh, we have students that wrote some assessments and then somewhere around quiz number three, quiz number four, we stopped seeing them, right? They just vanished. You don't want to include those people. Um, unless if you had a uh, smaller number of observations. Um, and then so the merging process would really involve uh, combining sources coming in from those different sources. So the survey itself, the, the Moodle interaction logs, the uh, student assessments, right? And then the, the, final, the, the final data frame that you come up with is what you use as input to, um, to this learning algorithm, right? And of course, it, it has to be labeled to a certain extent. So what that means, and we discussed what this means is that um, would, if, we are use, if we are looking at implementing this model using it this year, we would use last year's data to prepare our training set. So we label them because we know who passed and who failed. And then using the result that comes from there, we would then use observations from this year, like after we write quiz number two. We feed the learning algorithm the input from the students, and then it's able to tell us to say, this particular student is at risk or something. Um, fortunately for us, we can easily verify after deploying the model if it's actually working because we're we have control, we, we are working on the solution and then we are also the customers at the same time. Um, really, I mean, in terms of modeling, this is a classification problem here, um, nothing new, right? All we are, we are doing here is trying to see, is this student at risk or not, right? And we can do fancy things uh, or, uh, by coming up with the, uh, uh, well, I don't know if, at, yeah, at risk is the goal here, but but maybe in certain courses, some people, if they were wanting to use this in a different course, they would be interested in 
maybe ensuring that as many students as possible get A pluses, right? That would be like a different use case, I don't know. Or as many students as possible get at least a B, in which case you'd need B, B plus, A, A plus, right? What I'm trying to say is, it's entirely possible that the objective wouldn't necessarily have been at risk or not at risk. It could be much more than that. And the, the evaluation is pretty straightforward. We have, we have a data set that we can easily label. It's already labeled, actually. Um, and all we'll be doing here is looking at the, fundamentally, the accuracy of these models, right? Uh, maybe also, so this, was, this would be the overall accuracy, but, but what would be interesting as well is looking at uh, the accuracy uh, in terms of, I suppose, the, um, the accuracy in pay minor. We have students that are minoring in maths, civic education, languages, right? So would we be able to notice um, an inter-minor difference insofar as the accuracy is concerned? Perhaps this thing would only be more accurate for maths majors, who knows, right? Maybe civic education or minor, sorry. I don't know. So these are things to think about. And the other obvious metrics that you'd be looking at, the traditional metrics, is the F score. Um, F1 score, the precision and the recall, which we discussed. Because we are the ones who would want to use this, we wouldn't mind if, if, if the implementation only went as far as uh, an API of sorts that we feed. So I have five students. I just feed those observations to the model, and then the model just spits out some JSON uh, response and tells me to say this person is at risk, this person is is not at risk, right? I don't mind that. But if this was being made for somebody else, perhaps some people in ag agric, they perhaps don't know what JSON is, you'd need to implement some, some really fancy interface, I suppose. Or not really fancy, maybe a simple thing that allows someone to just type in student ID and marks, or just student mark or something, I don't know. Well, not student marks, but sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself here. An interface that allows this person to type in all those different attributes. It would be hard in certain instances, but in certain instances it wouldn't be hard. So in the example of this, the input observation, once you train the model, would be all those things associated with the performance of the student, right? The assessment, the input coming in from the survey, right? Those different attributes, which hardly ever change. The only moving target is the assessment here. Um, the demographic the information coming in from SIS. Right, so those would be your input, right, to the implemented model, and then um, it obviously gives you the result that you hopefully expect, or that's going to be useful in a way. Can't really think of any any other way of implementing this. I hope I hope this gives a, so the the idea behind this is I was wanting us to understand this. Everything we're going to be doing is centered around this. Um, after today's crash course, next week we start this part here. So essentially what we are mostly doing in the course, like I said, are these three things here. We don't touch this. This we assume someone is going to learn depending on the type of problem they're going to be working on. Um, if not, you engage experts. Um, and then this is an obvious thing here. So if there are no questions, then maybe... Yes? Yes, sir. Many of what you are trying to achieve prediction. Here, for this? Not only... The yeah, I, and I, so, sorry, I have to say this. A lot of people think what I do is boring, right? and I'm sorry. You're going to have to, you, you won't be pleased because no. But the, what I do myself is I this, these are areas that I am passionate about. I spent a lot of time in uh, like exploring uh, technology enhanced learning, so I've become somewhat of like a, an expert sort of, and very much interested. Most of what I write about is actually here and and digital libraries, right? and these are like obscure areas that, uh, so if you come and visit me, you find posters about this and people just they look at what I do and I don't know what they think, you know. but the, yes, the question. So the question is, so uh, what do you then do after finding uh, whether a student is at risk? Oh, so what I would do myself is I would have, um, one of the interventions is creating dedicated time to get myself together with the tutors Maybe we could form a, a special tutorial group where we have more contact hours for the students. Because right now the assumption is you are just have a tutorial, one is it two hours in a week. 
you meet everyone as a group, you don't know the level everybody is at, right? You don't know what problems they're ex uh, experiencing. So there's that. And then what, what I've been doing uh, since I, I joined this institution is, I, I guess I'm still in the honeymoon phase. I still reach out when I notice someone is not performing as expected. I reach out, I, I go out of my way actually. What help do you need, right? Uh, so that's what I would do. I can't do that for a hundred students, but I can do that if, if we find out that it's 20 of them that are at risk, right? I can do that. So, so that's, I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah. Yes. I just have a question also. Like on the same condition. So what was happening with this? It's like people were failing? Or yes, people are still failing. I have to show you this. And then, it's not like I'm pleased to to do to do this, but I have to show you this, right? Uh, we just had a, despite the confusion here, we had a quiz and I had a lecture with the students um, a few days ago, and we were discussing their results for quiz number one. The problem is they're still failing every year, irrespective of the cohort. And usually, you know what they say about. Um, about uh, oh successive generations are smarter. It, it's not working for us. It's still they, everybody who comes in, 2018 cohort bad performance. 2019 bad performance. This cohort. So this is how bad the situation is. This is just quiz one. Simple stuff, right? And I understand. I mean, for a first quiz, I guess uh, there's a bit of, a bit of confusion. We're trying to avoid this, right? This is not normal, you know. Only 20. Is it um, 20? 6.2% people pass quiz one. We're trying to avoid this. No one is happy about this because it turns out that if, if a lot of people are failing and they've been failing since 2018, maybe the problem is with you, right? Not the students, actually. I'm just speculating here that the problem is with the students. I, I do think it's with the students, though, but <laughs> I don't know. Um, so yeah, so the, the problem is that students are failing. They've been failing since this course started. Um, And I, I think Onza would be interested in this. Why? We are cash trapped now. You want you don't want people to fail anymore, right? You want them to pass so that they continue paying the tuition fees, in my opinion anyway. But uh, but anyway, so that's but I'm not using that as a motivation for me. But maybe Onza would be interested in doing that. Uh, on on the hindsight, I mean if you think about it, something like this could potentially be scaled up to say maybe uh, and of course, the attributes would be different here, the features, but maybe uh, in high schools, right? So that we, although now apparently we have, is it 90 plus percent pass rates or something at grade 12? I remember hearing about this. Right? But if it was bad, maybe we would deploy a model like this there. Yeah, so I guess I'm trying to, to, to tag into the generalization issue so we can generalize this a, a bit by modifying them. So, yeah. Let's go back to that, uh, that log file. Is it a log file? This? No, 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 go back to the log, CSV files. CICT? Yeah, just there. Here. Just there. Oh, this? I want to find out those uh, CSV results. Yes. Are you, are you using a script to group them together or...? Well, so I, um, I spent years studying digital libraries. I curate my information. Quail, right? I don't know if you've noticed what I'm doing here. I go through a manual process. Every time they write a quiz, this is transcribed. So it's a paper-based quiz. Sometimes it's, an, it's a take-home quiz. But for in-class quizzes, they have 15 minutes, or 13 minutes anyway, to write the quiz, and then it's marked. Once it's marked, this has to be entered into Mundo, but in the process, we transcribe this information. I can show you, uh, I guess it's, t it's important to look at this because it ties into the data preparation part, I suppose. So if I show you, perhaps not here, is it here? Let's look at last year's because it's, it's a rich, richer data set. Uh, we'll go to this. You know, I'll look at the consolidated uh, script, hope this is the one. <clears throat> so every time a quiz is written, um, I hope these things are masked, but it's fine. It's not, uh, every time a quiz is written, this is what we do, right? I we take note of um, yeah, these things are what we're interested in. The mark. So I, so all the assessments, quizzes, all the twenty quizzes, the tests, um, 
and maybe we could also, we are reaching here, but maybe also get uh, results coming in from the tutorial sessions. You never know, right? The, the idea behind feature extraction is get as much data as you can get and then remove what is not important, what does not influence what you're hunting for. So these, these are manually compiled. At the end of it all, we, and I think one of the data sets we're going to be working on is actually, okay, is actually, is actually the compiled, the final compiled, uh, the final compiled um, uh, file. Oh, it's the same one. So afterwards, I mean, it's very primitive data, <laughs> data um, compilation or analysis. Let's look at the master thing so that you see the final consolidated thing. So afterwards, um, the things you're seeing are compiled. How are they compiled? Not here. Yeah, so afterwards, we just link the, the different um, information coming in from those CSV files. So those are manually compiled anyway. So, um, it's a manual process. But we do it anyway, so we might as well just uh, use it. So it's not like it's, and it's not really a lot of work. Well, maybe it is for some people uh, when you're typing with two fingers. OK, if there are no questions, then maybe we can Unless if there are more questions, uh, really, uh, I was uh, um, my interest in all of this is to ensure that all of us understand this because that was the whole point of this. There are more people that are going to come through to run us through different projects. Um, some of them might not explicitly walk you through this process, but you should be in a position to figure out to say, oh, that what he's talking about is the data preparation stage, right? especially when Francis comes through, and especially that he's going to be looking at a different type of data set, right, images. Uh, be interested in hearing thoughts about that.